in addition to being a scientist, I have two other passions. One is photography, and uh, actually I had an ex exhibit of my photographs in Paris. I mean, they have nothing to do at all with the science. Some of them were taken in Norway. I don't, in the exhibit, there's not, the, in the 1950s and 60s. I traveled a lot and took Kodachrome pictures. And uh, after, for a while, Emily took pictures of my family. And I'm uh, thinking of maybe making up an exhibit from, from those photographs, uh, now that I'm sort of better known as a photographer. And, uh, and the other thing is that you know, when we do these calculations, we don't really do any chemistry. And so the chemistry that I do do is actually cooking. And uh, I've, for many years, I used to work in uh, famous restaurants in France and such for two or three weeks every summer and um, work in the kitchen and uh, replace the people who were taking their day off. And so that was the real chemistry that I like to do. And still at home now, I do the cooking and my wife uh, does the dishwashing and such, and that's... Uh... So I think it's nice if uh, being a scientist, when you work, you really work full time. And I think that's one of the things you have to realize, is that you have to work really very hard. You can be smart, but that's not enough. But for me, the very important part is, okay, I work very hard when I'm doing science, but then I do other things and do them as well. And I think that's uh, a good way of living. It's also better, obviously, for your family if uh, you can sort of uh, divide your time a little bit. And we have a chalet in the Haute Savoie where I used to, we love to go walking and such. And uh, I think that's, for me at least, somebody has written that. Actually, it's in the preface of the photo book that every scientist has a secret garden, and that's my secret garden.